<laughs> Next, we have uh, Chief A. Thank you. See you. <laughs> Yeah. Amy and I are going to just give a quick little overview of the whole right. budget before you guys start your reviews. Um, Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. I expressed at the beginning of the meeting, and I will say it again, I think these budgets should be gone over in the context of all of the budgets. I think taking police and fire out of turn and putting them in the middle of a regular agenda is not proper. And I, I am agree. not happy with this. I agree. Why well, I want time to sit down and really go through these departments in a regular, normal manner, uh, such as we have always done, and I don't think this is the proper place to be tying up the department heads uh, in the, right in the middle of a Monday agenda. Mr. Welch, is there any complaints from the department heads? Not yet. Okay, we will continue. Well, well good evening. Um, what we thought we'd start with tonight is uh, just a quick overview of the budget that's before you, presented out of the town manager's office. Give you a little bit of um, kit texture of what we went through to prepare the budget. So the town manager's current budget, we we're trying to come up with our, oh, our uh, so you folks can see that in front, they'll do it at home. So town manager's proposed budget for 2020 is $28,021,028. This budget request uh, covers all functional areas of the department. Um, figure is just slightly below uh, the 2020 default budget. So how did we get there? Well, at the beginning of the year, the, the, the budget process, uh, the town manager gives direction to the department heads to prepare their budgets as we usually do. We received those in, and then our team sat down, Fred, myself, and Christy, and we reviewed those. And we had discussions about what we thought uh, was the appropriate way to present a budget to the board for review. Um, we spent a long time talking about past history, um, the needs, the pressures that we all feel and hear about service levels. Um, and we set out uh, to prepare a budget for uh, consideration this year that was just slightly below the default budget. Given the last several years of default budgets, uh, we felt to be sensitive to the taxpayers, this was an appropriate way to begin the process. Um, we accomplished that, and the budget before you currently sits up just slightly um, below $6,000 below the default budget. Uh, this wasn't an easy task. Every year dealing with default budgets, we've been dealing with them the last several years. We know that there are challenges, uh, are the needs of our departments. Um, so we sat out and used as guides several factors. Our interviews with the department heads, uh, what we felt could be deferred based on those discussions. Um, we looked hard at what the five-year average was for spending in each of the accounts, as well as uh, other historical guides and the default budget itself, uh, what's projected to be. Some examples of things that we ended up cutting, again, using that five-year average, we've reduced certain purchases or deferred purchases of certain items, uh, certain long-term maintenance issues have been deferred, uh, some associated training and overtime. Uh, there's reduction, there are no reductions in full-time service. There are no reductions in full-time service. But we believe this budget meets the minimum level of service that's been expected from the community. I and mean, we're confident that our, while challenging, our employees are excellent and will continue to provide the best service they can within those, those numbers. Christy now will go over some specifics of uh, what makes up the total budget. Okay, so as you guys can see, this is similar to what we had done last year. So out of the $28 million budget in front of you, 44.45% uh, is made up from wage lines, totaling $12,453,990. So that is the largest driver there. Um, they go in order. Basically going down insurance makes up the next part at 12.19%. Utilities at 5.03%. Debt at 9.46%. The retirement system, so that would be group one and group two retirement, which is also driven by wages, is 8.86%. Contracts at 5.96%. Benefits, health and that was like your health insurance, life insurance, employee benefits at 3.52. Gasoline and diesel at 0.73%. And then the other items is 9.81. And I know every year everyone asks what's other. It's like your supplies and expenses, your vehicle maintenance, your building maintenance. Um, repairs and expenses, things like that is what falls into that category there. And this is just a little pie chart um, showing the same information that I just gave you guys on the other slide. Summary of adjustments, so 
Do you want to do the adjustments or? Sure, as we see for the breakdown, the summary of adjustments from the what was presented by the department heads to what you see before you today is 423,299. And we list out each of those areas, um, some cuts to the cemetery requests, uh, police department, fire department, and public works, the, the major ones that are in front of you. So we'll be happy to answer any questions you have or let you get started with the fire department and begin the reviews, whatever you'd like to do, Mr. Chairman. Does Jim, could, could you just very briefly describe how the budget, I mean, you've done this with the budget, but how the budget goes, goes to department heads, goes to town manager, you guys, then it goes to us and then where it goes from there. Sure. And what the final budget, you know, that is proposed is. Sure, an annual process begins with Fred giving his direction to the departments for development of needs uh, budgets comes into the town manager's office where there is a budget proposed by the town manager to you folks, the Board of Selectmen. You do your reviews and make your decisions to adjust up and down. And from there, it transfers over to the Budget Committee, who does the same thing. They review it and make adjustments up or down as they see fit. And finally, it goes to the deliberative session for review by the town as a whole, and then to the ballot box in March for final vote of the town. Thank you. Rusty? No. Ready to go. Mrs. Wolsey, this should be part of the overall Richard. budget discussion. Yes, I do have comments. Um, thank you for this presentation. And looking at the breakdown of what makes up the $28 million, it would appear to me that wages, insurance, utilities, debt, retirement system, benefits, gas and diesel, we really don't have much control over um, as far as default versus non-default. That, to some extent, yes, that's true. And contracts are contracts like we just did a couple contracts with UPW. So that would include all those things, and then obviously other items would be everything else. So when I look at the budget, and I totally understand why we're going below the default budget, because we want the budget to pass, <laughs> and I get that. That <laughs> needs to happen. But at the same time, this whole process that we're going to be starting tonight needs to remind the voters every single time that we have cut uh, what you know stands out to me is the 92,000 from cemeteries and you mentioned it I don't know if it's in here but you mentioned it the maintenance has been deferred to yep. later years on probably a lot of different things sure just just as you see in those numbers historically whether you know as my period of time as a department head when you have fixed cost items, things that you have to do, your base service, unless you start, your major drivers are always wages, both your fixed wages for your base wages and your overtime. We are a service-based community. We have a great deal of demand on us with our summer season across all of our departments. So those drivers, we've got to determine what is the level of service that you want to provide. You can always cut, absolutely. You can reduce personnel. Not something we felt was appropriate oh, yeah, or demanded no, yeah, by our community. Yeah, definitely. You know? I don't agree so. We think we are we're presenting, and again, the words minimum or adequate standards are not things that we in Hampton I, or myself are really like to do. Adequacy and minimum. But we've had strong messages from our community for a couple of years that we felt was appropriate to answer this way. No, and I, I do, I get that, that it is appropriate. But I just want the voters to remind that we're going to be having warrant articles. <coughs> that are, you know, sort of need to collaboratively work with this budget to actually get some things done. Like, you know, infrastructure, 70% depreciated. <laughs> you know, I mean, yep. so this budget is definitely not gonna have that in there. So we just need to make sure that, you know, like I talked to Public Works vaguely about <clears> it, when they present their budget, can we sort of talk about the warrant articles at the same time? Because we need those warrant articles, mm -hmm. the way I look at it, for the sustainability of the town. So I just want to, you know, throughout the whole process, I'm going to be pointing that out and that, you know, this stuff is not in the budget. So the warrant articles need to, you know, be considered. They're a complementary process, no question. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and now we will have Chief, Chief Ayat. 